this room Miracles happen when you move
Glory, glory to God. Hallelujah. God bless everybody this morning. It's so good to have you in the house of God. Amen. Is everybody okay this morning? Are we awake? Are we here? Amen. I'm going to ask you to stand, church. We're going to go ahead and get started with our service. Amen. And uh, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna be praying to begin our service. God bless you today, this July the 4th. Uh, happy 4th of July. Amen. And it's a great day for freedom and everything else that God has given us. Amen. Bow your head with me. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this morning, Lord. We thank you for your goodness. Thank you for allowing us to get here to your house, Father. We pray that you would have your way in this service, Lord. We thank you for everything, Father God, that you've given us, Lord. Everything you've done for us, Father God. And thank you, Lord, for the sacrifices that other people have made, Father God, for us to have freedom. And the most important part, Father God, is your son, Jesus, giving his life, Lord, giving his life for us to give, to give us freedom, Lord, in life eternally, Lord. We thank you this morning, and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, worship with us. Amen. praise amen father god we bless you this morning lord we thank you father god for your goodness amen church is everybody good this morning amen i know it's been a long week amen but we, we're just, we're so thankful that we're able to be here in the house of god it's it's we're nice and fresh in here amen and we're ready to worship the lord amen is everybody happy like that wave wave at me church wave at me amen it's, it's so good to see a lot of you amen i haven't seen yes you guys up there too Guys, can we give our, our tech crew a great, hand, a great hand of appreciation? You guys do an awesome job up there. And I'm sorry, church, that uh, to the tech team, I apologize. We have we have some announcements and other stuff, too, that we do. And if you guys can, if you haven't downloaded our app yet from the church, download that. Amen. And you have a lot of great things on there and all the announcements and everything that we have in there. Uh, we want to be, you, you to be able to, to, to receive it yourself and also share it with somebody else. Amen. Download all of our apps, Instagram. We're on Facebook, and the services that we've been having, the messages and everything else, all the worship that we've been having, share it out, church. Share it out with other people. Other people are getting blessed and ministered to. Amen. We want to be a blessing like that. Baytown Revival Center is a great place, and I can testify to that, and I, I, I'm grateful for our pastors and all of the staff and all of you, church. We appreciate you. Amen. And right now, church, like, like I said, it's been a long week. 
For some of us, it's been hotter because you've been working out there or you've been traveling and you've had a great vacation, amen, a great time of vacation and everything else. But you know what, church? We're here this morning ready to lift up the name of Jesus, amen. It's a great happy 4th of July and we're grateful because we can be in a, in, a, in a house of prayer. Other people can't, don't have that opportunity to worship like that, but we're grateful that we do, amen. So as we get into this worship church, feel free to lift up your hands. These altars are open as well. If you need to be ministered to, let them minister to you. Worship with us. Amen.
Regardless of what's happening, regardless of what's going on in life and everything else, we have to put those things to the side, church, and go in. Amen. And the Lord is inviting us in this morning. He's saying, come in. You know, my son has my son has shed his blood. We're talking about freedom. Jesus Christ has set us free. Amen. If you've received Jesus Christ in your heart, that blood is sufficient enough to wash away all of our sin. Amen. And whenever we come before the Lord and we, we confess our sins, the Bible says that God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So this morning, yes, we celebrate a, a great happy 4th of July, but we're free, church. We're free, and the Lord invites us this morning as we sing this next song, as we worship, feel free to lift up your hands. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, um, I don't want to be 
something to where I'm, I'm telling you what to do. Just let it come out of your heart. Amen. Like I said, don't stay in the outer court. Don't stay in the, the holy place. Come into the most holy place and, and encounter God like that. Amen. Can we, can we do that this morning, church? Let's worship. Thank you, Lord.
but I feel the glory of God in this place. Amen. Woo, man. Okay, can we give our worship team a great hand of, of, of appreciation? Amen. Thank you, guys. Church, is gonna, it's, it's time for our giving. Amen. And uh, I just want to encourage you. The Bible says that God loves a cheerful giver, so we're going to be collecting our offering. I'm going to invite the brothers to come uh, to collect our offering. There's four ways to give, mobile, online, text to give, and in service, uh, in service giving. Amen. God bless you as you give. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this morning. Thank you for your goodness, Lord. And we thank you for this part as well, Lord, where we're able to give, Father God. We pray that you would take this offering, bless it and multiply it. Bless the givers, Father God. And continue to bless this church and this service, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray this morning. And all of God's people say with me, amen. Amen. God bless you, church. Are you guys ready for the word this morning? Amen. Come on, Pastor. Amen. Amen. How many glad you're free this morning? Is there anybody here that's free? Anybody here blood-bought, born again? Amen. Anybody here filled with the Holy Ghost? Amen. Come on now. I thought this was the 4th of July. We got that on Calvary. That's right. We got free a long time ago. I didn't need the 4th to set me free. Amen. Jesus did it a long time ago when he died upon a cross. Amen. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord on 4th of July. 
I, I think some may, maybe stayed out a little bit too late last night. I heard some are getting ready for camp. Some are, some are a little sick and, and all kinds of things. But how many of you know that we're here together? And the Bible says where two or three are gathered in his name. Right? Is anybody else here in his name? Amen. A few of you. Praise God for that. Let me just share with you, in the morning, all the campers need to be here at 7.30 a.m. Don't be late. Be ready to go to youth camp. We have quite a few going. I think it's somewhere around 20 with all the campers and staff that's going to youth camp. That is awesome. Can we give our youth pastors and all those a good hand that's involved in that? Appreciate those that's going to be driving in the morning. And uh, can we pray for them real quick? I want to pray uh, just a, a prayer of safety and blessing upon our, our youth pastors and the leaders that are going to teen camp and our district directors that are preparing everything. Can we take a moment and do that right now? So let's just bow our head and let's pray. Father, we love you this morning. And God, I pray, Father, Lord, for safety for all of our kids that are going to camp through the next two weeks. I pray, God, for our leadership that is going to camp to represent our church, Father, Lord, and to lead all these young people, Father. I pray, God, that you would just pour your spirit upon each one of them, Father, God, that you would bless them, God, in, in, in the way they need to be blessed, Father. God, we love you. We praise you. We glorify you in Jesus' name. And somebody say amen this morning. Amen. Praise God. I, I'm fixing to get into the Word, and I, I got a couple presentations to, to do after the service, after the message. But, uh, man, this day is, is uh, one of my favorite historical days for our nation because it does represent our freedom and our declaration. And I'm going to be preaching on the thought, declare it. How many know that sometimes we need to declare something? Amen. How many has ever been out of the country? On a flight, not military flight. <laughs> I've seen Brother Gene. He's been out on a, on a lot of military flights. But how many know that when you go into another country or you come back into the country, they tell you to declare something? Does anybody know what that means? In the military, too? So I ain't never been, so I didn't know. But you've got you to gotta tell them what you have. You've got to tell them if you've got any goods or anything that, that, you know, that you're traveling because they want you to pay tariffs, taxes, Different things on it. They got to know some things you can't bring in, some things you can't take out. And it has absolutely nothing to do with the message. That's just a sidebar this morning, all right? But sometimes we got to declare some things. And in 1776, around July 2nd to July 4th, there's debate on when it actually happened. But we know that the Declaration of Independence was signed and it was adopted. And that declaration basically said that we are going to be an independent nation. We're no longer going to be under the rule of, of, of Britain, and we're going to be free, a free nation, right? But did you know that those guys that signed that declaration, they could have been signing their death sentence? If they would not have won the war... Every one of those men would have been sought out, and they would have been killed for treason. Do you understand that this morning? That it was a bold act of faith and determination and resolve to do what they did. So what is a declaration? If you declare something, you're making an emphatic, strong statement about whatever it is you're declaring. And I want you to hold on to that because that's going to go with the message here in just a moment. If you got your Bibles, I want you to go to the book of Deuteronomy. I don't, I don't preach out of this book too often. Uh, but I'm going to share something out of chapter 1, verse 5. And I'm going to give you some history. And then I'm going to give you some, some just good word. Is that okay this morning? All right. It says, on this side... Jordan, in the land of Moab, began Moses to declare this law, saying, 
And let me pause. Father, we thank you, God, for each one that is here this morning. I thank God for those that have returned from vacation safely. I thank God for those that you've allowed to go on vacation. I pray you keep them safe, God. But, God, I pray for those that are in this building this morning, those that are watching online this morning, Father, that you would help us to understand that there's some things that we need to declare in our lives, Father. God, we love you. We praise you. We give you glory in Jesus' name. And again, say amen. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated. So here we find that Moses has come to a place in his life where he is fixing to step off the scene. He is fixing to to go and be with the Lord a, a little while down the road. And the Lord spoke to him and told him to speak some things to the Israelites again. Now you must understand where the Israelites were at this point in time and so I'm going to put this in context for you so you understand it. How many of you understand that God has a plan for the Israelites at this point? I don't think there's any debate over that, that we must understand that God had a plan. He had a covenant promise that he had entered into with Abraham a long time ago, and he told them that they would have a land, that they were going to have a place. And so God, from that point forward, was working his plan out through the Israelites. The problem was is that many times that the house of Israel did not obey God, did not trust God, did not do what God wanted them to do. And how many of you know that's a problem? How many of you know that's a problem when the kids don't do what they're supposed to do? Any of you ever been kids? No. <laughs> How many's ever done something that got yourself in trouble with your parents? Come on. Amen. I do it all the time. My mom and dad's still watching down, and I'm sure they shake their head and go, boy, if I could just cross this gulf. Amen. So the Israelites had an issue. They had an issue. They always seemed to, to lack faith. They always seemed to side on the, the side of fear. They didn't always trust God or obey God. And so God was constantly trying to get them from one place to the other place. Now, you know at this point they had just left Egypt. And how many of you know they had it good in Egypt for a while? Amen. How many ever been, been placed in your life where it just seemed like everything was good? In Egypt, when, when Joseph was there, they had provision, they had food, they wasn't in slavery, they wasn't in bonds, they were just a free people living off the land, just, just enjoying life. But how many of you realize that that's not where God wanted them permanently? It was just a provisional place with a provisional promise. I want you to hear me this morning that it was a provisional place with a provisional promise. It was a temporary place because God still had a covenant promise. He still had a word that he had declared over them many years back. He still had something that he needed to fulfill for them. So he allotted them time to be there. But there came a point, and if you go back and you study and read it, that there came a new Pharaoh that didn't know Joseph, didn't know about God, didn't know about the agreements and all those things. And he began began to enslave them, put them in bonds, and he made them work. Now, some people say, well, man, that's just awful. Why would God do that? Sometimes God's got to make us a little miserable to get us to move somewhere else. Listen to me. Sometimes God's got to make you miserable to get you to move somewhere else. See, it was good for a season it was good for a while. But here's the thing. When we get in a provisional place, sometimes we just want to camp there and stay there. But remember, God has declared a word over his children, and God never goes back on his word. He says, i got to move you. And so you should know the story. God called Moses, sent Moses back to Egypt. Moses go and says, listen, guys, it's time to move. God is about to set you free from your bondage. They doubted, they whined, they complained. How many of you can say amen to that? And then they began to leave after all the miracles and the wonders that were performed. This is the history I'm giving you. 
And you know, they get across the Red Sea, and God parts it through Moses standing there with the rod, and Pharaoh and all his army are wiped out. The enemy's gone. And now he says, guess what, guys? It's time for you to go and possess the land I have promised you. Doesn't that sound good? Doesn't it sound good if someone says, you know what, I got something for you. I was thinking about this earlier. I, I, I wish I had, uh, had, had a lot of money. There's a lot more people here. I'd put about, you know, $1,000 up here somewhere and have all the big guys like Brandon and Ronnie and all of them got guarded. And I would say to you, you know, if you can get through these guys, you can have it. <laughs> Did you say, say when? <laughs> how many of y'all would fight for it? If it's a thousand bucks, how many of y'all would fight for it? It'd be cash. It wouldn't be credit. It'd be cash. If I had 10 $100 bills down here on the floor right now and I put 10 guys around it, how many of y'all would try to get to it? Raise your hand. Be honest. I know I would. It's just $1,000. Why $1,000? Because we can see it. It's tangible. We can spend it. We know what we can do with it, right? But you know, there's a lot of people that will look at that and say, you know what, I can't. But God said you can. And so at this point, they have wandered around the wilderness. They have had just different things happen. People have died, and they're wandering around. And Moses says, you know what? It's time for me to remind the people. How many of you know sometimes we need to be reminded why we are where we are and where we're going? We need to be told, and we need to listen again over and over to the word that says that there is a heaven Amen. That one day there's going to be a trump of God that's going to sound. One day we're going to go to a place that's been prepared for us. We need to be reminded why we're doing what we're doing and be reminded that we can declare the word of God over our life. It says on this side of Jordan, in the land of Moab, began Moses to declare this law saying. What was he saying? I'm not going to read it to you. I'm going to paraphrase it to you. But he got up before them and he said, you know what? I'm going to make an emphatic statement. I'm going to make a statement to you that is true, that I believe in, that God has spoke to me, and it's going to be hanging over you. How many of you know that we can declare anything? You know, we got those New Year's resolutions, right? How many's already broke yours this year? Raise your hand, be honest. <laughs> the famous one, I'm going to lose weight. Yep, right. Mm -hmm. Till you smell the brownies in the oven. Till we go to the dollar store and see the honey buns. Uh, that's why I said it, VB, because I know you. Listen to me. We can declare anything. We can stand up here this morning and say, you know what? I declare that I'm going to do better this year. I declare I'm going to grow spiritually. I declare that I'm going to have freedom. I declare, I declare, I declare, right? We can declare all day long. But you know what making a declaration needs? It needs some resolve, and it needs some determination. It needs some faith. It needs some believing. It needs some trusting, and it needs us to just turn our lives over to God. He says, I want you to hear me this morning he's in verse 6 he said the Lord our God spoken to us in Horab saying you have dwelt long enough in this mountain what he's saying it says you've been around and around and around and around you've been out here 40 years just running around this desert just traveling around and the Lord is declaring to you today that it's time for you to set your foot in the promised land Amen. There's a lot of you that are standing in a provisional place, but God has got a promised land for you. He's got some blessings for you, and you need to get up, and you need to declare the word of the Lord over your life. <laughs> he says, you've been there long enough. He says, now it's time to go. And then he begins to tell them some history. He says, you know why you're where you're at? It's because you didn't have enough faith and you didn't believe God. Think about it. How many knows the story of the manna and the quail, the water problems? Go back and study their history. 
what did they do every time there was a challenge? What did they do every time there was a challenge? What did they do? Exactly, they complained. Doesn't that sound like us? <laughs> people are people, folks. We're all people. I'm not perfect. I complain all the time. <laughs> Don't believe me. Ask my wife. She'll tell you. But why do they complain? They complained because God moved them from a place that was provisional, that had things, but then that place turned bad, but they were still content being there. Sometimes we get content when the blessing runs out, just staying, staying, staying. I don't know about you, but I want to walk in the blessings of God daily. I want to be blessed daily. I want to have everything that God has for me daily. You know, I was singing in one of those songs of the song other. How, how many of you ever bought a new car? Anybody ever bought a new car? Yeah. How many of you ever bought something that, that had a lot of buttons on it? The other day, you know, we, we got a new truck here a while back. And there's buttons everywhere. The truck is smarter than I am. I'm like, I don't know what all this stuff's for. There are buttons in that truck that I will probably never push. You know why? Because I don't know what they do. The other day a button got pushed, and I didn't know what was going on in that truck. My wife didn't know what was going on in the truck. And it's been a few days, so I don't even remember what it was, but it was something that was weird. It was like lights are on, or we couldn't get, yeah, it was lights on. We couldn't get the lights on off inside the truck. I'm like, what did we touch? And finally, we just started, you know, pushing some buttons, and we found one that opens a window that we didn't need. All kinds of stuff's happening. And see, sometimes that's how we are when we come into relationship with God. We got access to so much through God's Word. There are so many promises and so many, many things that God has spoke to us as people. And yet, we don't even know which button to push because we hadn't read the manual. You know, there is a manual that you can get out of your glove box that tells you how to operate everything in that vehicle. But you know what we do? Ah, let's just drive it. I don't even know why they make vehicles with all the buttons, because I promise you, you're just like me. Most of you don't know what half that stuff does. You're just driving. And what I'm telling you is, is I found out that it's got heated seats. So I promise you, in the wintertime, if we have another freeze, guess who's going to have their seats warm? You know why? Because I found out that's what it has. If I wouldn't have found that out, I'd have been driving around in the wintertime with heated seats and not know that they're there. Right? See, some of you are just like it. You're driving around in this relationship with God, and you have to so much more but you're driving around in the winter time without your heated seats on some of you getting it what am I saying what I'm saying is this is you need to hear the word of the Lord this morning and declare some things over your, your life he said I declare to you that God's got a promise that God is going to take you to that promised land but you can't go back to your old habits and your old ways he says, I've been with you long enough. I know that you complain when you're hungry. I know you complain when you ain't got anything to drink. I know you complain when there's somebody that's six foot that comes up and you're 5'10". I know, I know, I know. I've been around you to hear all your complaining and all your whining. And what I want to remind you is, is that there's still a promised land that has your name on it. He says, I sent out 12 before. They went out and they spied the land and they came back with all the fruit and all the bounty of the land. They showed you how good it is. 
You know, sometimes I feel like as pastors and preachers, we got to be like salesmen. <laughs> we got to sell Jesus. <laughs> Man, that sounds good. I don't know if I can afford that. I'll just take the basic model. They brought the fruit, the bounty back. They saw it. Every one of them agreed that it was good. I want you to hear me. Every one of them agreed. Oh, man, that is some great-looking fruit. Oh, the bounty was good. But there was a disagreement in one area. And the area was, are we able to go and possess it? Notice how they talk to each other. I'm not going to read, but they said, "How I, we cannot do this. We look like grasshoppers in their eyes. They are so big. They're giants. There's armies that are well-trained, and they have weapons, and they got all this stuff. But what they forgot was who was trying to lead them to that land. Hear me. Well, there's situations that come up in our life that look too big, too hard, and we sit back and say, you know what? We can't do this. We can't overcome this. You're right. You can't, but God can. You can't, but God can. He says, if you go back to your old ways and you always doubt and you always fear, you will never be able to go into that land that has your name on it. You'll have to stay here. But if you'll get some courage and you'll get some faith and you'll trust me and you'll declare the word of the Lord over your life and you'll say, you know what? If God be for me, nobody can stand against me. And let me tell you something, church. We have some promises that we need to declare over our lives so that we can have the victory that's already been won. He said, just go. Don't live in your complaining. Don't live in your rebellion. Don't live in all those things that you lived in before. But when you take the next step, take it under the declaration of independence that God has given you for that land. Hear me. He said, it's free. All we got to do is receive it. Receive it. But how do we do that? <laughs> how do we do it? I want to read verse 37 through 40. Chapter 1, Moses goes on to say, And also, the Lord was angry with me for your sakes, saying, You shall not go in thither. Moses had got angry serving God in the capacity of leader. Why? Why was he angry? Do you know that negativity can rub off on everyone? It can rub off on everyone. It takes a special person to handle the negativity and keep going. He said, the Lord was angry with me because of what I did. Y'all remember, he struck the rock instead of spoke to the rock, right? Y'all remember the story? I'm tired of listening to these complaining whiners and blah, blah. Ah! That's not what the Lord told him to do. And so he sinned. He says, I'm not going to get to inherit that. I'm going to have to stand from afar and see y'all take possession of that land. He says, but I want to give you some advice. He says, but Joshua, the son of Nun, which stands before you, shall go in thither. Encourage him. Encourage him. Encourage him. When you make a declaration of anything, you better have some encouragement. Hear me. It's hard to lead your home when everybody in your home 
doesn't like where you're leading them. Hear me. How many has ever said, you know what, we're going to go and we're going to join the gym this year. I'm going to get everybody membership and we're going to go work out. <laughs> Dad, I don't like to sweat. Dad, I don't want to do that. And you're trying. Yeah, I know. I got some of my family too. And you're trying. You're trying to get everybody healthy. And you got this vision of at the end of the year, you're going to be ripped again. And you're going to look in shape. And everybody's going to be happy. Let me tell you something. Not everybody likes the path that God is putting you on. And they had experienced all the negativity, they experienced failure over and over and over again. And the reason was, was their attitude, their, their way of looking at it. They always looked at the situation and not seeing the bigger picture. The bigger picture is this, is that God has a plan for us. How many ever had their children say, I don't want to go to church? I don't want to go to church, Sister Wanda, I don't want to go. Did Bubba ever tell you that as a kid? Yeah, okay. They, they knew better. Right? I, I don't want to go. They're going to do the same thing they did last Sunday. But you got them on a path. What's the path? The path isn't about getting them to church. The path's about getting them to heaven. Right? The path is about seeing them have a blessed life. The path is about seeing the, God's blessings pour into the life. And the only way to do that is to encourage them to get there. And, but we see negativity rises up in what he says. He says, you've done all this stuff in the past. You've been negative. You've complained. You whined. You groaned. You moaned. You did all this stuff. And God still loves you. And God's still trying to declare a word over your life, a promise. This is what I want you to do. When Joshua takes over, encourage him. One soft, amen. How many of y'all like to be encouraged? You like it when someone comes up and says, you look beautiful today. Yeah, I love that. You like it when someone says, you know what, you got a new dress. I just love that dress. They don't know about, no, you got it at Goodwill, paid like 50 cents for it. You like it when someone says, did you do your hair different this morning? You like encouragement, don't you? Then why is it so hard to encourage someone? He says, encourage him. We've got to learn something, church. We've got to learn that if we're going to get what God has for us, that we've got to declare it over my life, over your life. I made a declaration a long time ago that I gave my heart to the Lord and I was not going to turn back. I was not going to go backwards. I was going to continue forwards. And the only way I can do that is to keep my mind right, to keep my heart right. And the way I do that is encourage myself. But I have to encourage myself through God's word. I can do all things which Christ strengthens me. If God be for me, who can stand against me? Hallelujah. I declare the word of the Lord over my life. I declare it. I declare it. I declare it. He says, moreover, you little ones which you said should be a prey, and your children which in that day had no knowledge between good and evil, they shall go thither, and unto them I will give it, and they shall possess it. Notice it was for the children. But as for you, turn you and take your journey into the wilderness by the way of the sea. I want you to hear me. God's got some things for us. Some of you think you have arrived. <laughs> well, if this is where I arrived to, I want to keep going. Some of you got some things that's happening in your life that is disappointing, that's hard, that's hurting, that's, 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 that's causing a lot of issues. We're going to have those along the way. There's going to be days where we may not have food and we've got to depend on God for manna. There may be days where we don't have no meat, but God's going to send quail. might not be the ribeye you want, but it'll be something. 
Listen to me, church. There's going to be days where there's challenges and things. And the easy thing to do is get into the mindset of, well, I just, I just can't believe God's doing this and just complaining about this and that and the other. And what I'm telling you this morning is this, is that if you want freedom and you want the blessing of God upon your life, you have got to declare that word. Notice what Moses did. He declared it to him. But Moses couldn't go. Because that had already been declared to him. So what did they have to do? They had to walk in the declaration. Hear me. Some of you need to start walking in that declaration that you made a long time ago to the Lord. God, I give you my life. God, I'll serve you. God, I'll be faithful. God, I'll do this. God, I'll do that. God, I want your blessings. God, I want to have a testimony. God, I want to see my children saved. God, I want to see, see my family saved. God, I want to see things change. I want to see things. Listen to me. All that's there for you. But it's easy to declare it. It's harder to walk in it. See, he said, there it is. But you got to go. You got to go. Do you understand what I'm saying this morning, church? I can declare it over your lives. God can declare it over your lives. But unless you receive it and walk in that declaration, it's nothing but words. They had a choice to make. And guess what happened? Joshua took over. I love Joshua. Joshua said, I am the man. He got up before the people. Moses had prepared the people. He says, I am the man. And now that I'm the man, we ain't going to have no more complaining. We ain't going to have no more grumbling. We're not going to have defeat. We're going to walk in nothing but victory. He had one defeat that I know of in his life. And that's because someone else decided to sin at Jericho. And you know what he did with that person? He got rid of them. Got rid of them, got rid of the family, said, we can't have this. We're going forward. And he went forward day after day after day, and he possessed exactly what God told him he could possess. Are you willing to go for it? Are you willing to step out by faith? Even when you see giants, even when you see enemies that are bigger than you, when you see walled cities, when you see weaponry that's beyond what you have, listen to me, church. He saw it. He heard it. He had a vision for it. He declared it. He believed it. He walked in it, and he possessed the land. So, so what's the difference between him and us? Nothing. All we have to do is walk in it, believe it, trust it, and go forward. Lay aside the weight, the sin that so easily besets us, and move forward with Jesus and the Holy Spirit and let God do what God wants to do in our life and have a blessed and happy life. Amen. Thank you, Sister Wanda. Can y'all give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning? He's worthy. Declare it. So I thought about a few things. Our promised land is heaven. How many's already got your ticket? How many's already punched the ticket? How many's already, your name's already in the Lamb's Book of Life? Do y'all still believe in all that stuff? I mean, I still believe in all that stuff. I don't, I don't think people believe in that stuff. I believe that there's a book in heaven that's got my name in it. Why? Because I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I punched my ticket. And I guess what? You ain't getting my ticket. Right? Come on. How many of y'all let the devil have your ticket? I ain't letting the devil have my ticket. I got my ticket. I punched it. My name's there. My mansion's being built. God's preparing that new glorious body, Sister Wanda. I mean, you know you're going to get glorious body when you die. If you're going the right way. 
Listen to me, church. It's already there. You punch your tail. Hold on to it. Declare it over your life. If you're hurting this morning, declare healing over your life. If you're having financial trouble, declare blessing over your life. If you're having relationship issues, declare relationship healing. Listen to me. We can declare some things over our life through the word of God, but we got to pick it up and we got to punch the buttons that we hadn't been using in a while and let have, have access to the things that God has for us. And when you start doing that, guess what's going to happen? You're going to see a difference you're going to see a change i can't wait till winter time i have never had anything that had heated seats in my life brother fred i can't wait when it gets to, you know if it freezes like it did this past february how many of y'all remember that freeze bb you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go out there and i'm gonna hit that button start my truck and I'm going to go out there and I'm going to find the manual. I'm going to look for that button that says heated seats. And I'm going to go out there and I'm going to sit down. And I'm going to go. Oh, that feels good. <laughs> thank you, Chevrolet, and thank you, Lord. Right? But you know the only way I can do that? The only way I can do that is to have access to it. Right? God's got some great things for you guys. <laughs> the problem is, is you're just driving. And you haven't opened your manual. You, didn't, you can't declare it if you don't know it. <laughs> the Bible says... I'll never see the righteous forsaken or a seed begging for bread. Come on, declare it. The Bible says that if there's any sick among them, let them call upon the elders of the church to lay hands on them, anoint them with oil, and they shall recover. Come on, declare it, somebody. Come on. There's some things in here that we can declare. My Bible tells me that my God owes a, owns a cows on a thousand hills. I declare some beef this morning. Hallelujah. Listen to me, church. You've got to declare some things, but if you don't know it, you can't declare it. Speak it over your life. And when you speak it, believe it. Believe it. Make an emphatic statement. I declare the blessings of the Lord over my life. I declare the blessings of the Lord over my life. Lord, because I want your blessings, and I declare them today, God, I'm going to walk with you. I'm going to talk with you. I'm going to fellowship with you. I'm going to obey you. If you tell me to go left, I'm going left. You tell me to go right, I'm going right. You tell me to stay straight, I'm staying straight. God, wherever you want me to go, direct me, lead me, guide me. And Father, I will give you praise in all things. Amen. Let's stand to our feet this morning. Will you bow your head with me this morning? Father, I thank you for your word. And God, we're celebrating our nation's independence on this holiday. And God, I'm thankful that I live in a country where we can come together still and worship you without persecution. But God, I know that if we're not careful, that right will be taken away from us, Lord. But Lord, I'm in your house. And God, I declare the blessings that are in your word over my life. And God, I pray, Father, that someone else in this building today, God, would declare those same blessings. God, that land was not just for one or two of your children. But God, it was for that nation. And God, we know that your word and the work that was done upon the cross was not done for one group or one man. But God, it was done for the whole world, for anyone who would believe in you, God. You said they would be saved. God, I pray today that there's somebody that will call upon you 
And God, that you will save them from their circumstance, that you'll save them from their bondage, that you'll save them from their sin. And God, that you would direct their path from this point forward, God. Hallelujah. Father, you're worthy this morning, Lord. Hallelujah. If you're here this morning and you need to make a declaration over some things in your life, maybe you're struggling with some sin, maybe you're struggling in some areas of your life that you want to declare God's word over. I want you to step out of your seat and make your way to an altar this morning and say, God, I declare it. I make a bold statement of faith, God. And not only do I declare it, but God, I'm going to walk in it. I'm not going to be negative about it anymore. I'm going to be positive. I'm going to encourage myself, God, in your word. I'm going to just stay the course and I'm going to press through and push through, God. Because, God, I have a vision for you and a vision that you've given me, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Come on, church. If you need to declare something over your life, come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Today is our Independence Day. This is where we get free from the bounds of the enemy. We get free of the snares of the devil this morning. And we walk in victory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.
Sometimes it's it's sometimes we go a while where it seems like we don't see nothing happen. It seems like we go through a routine walk with God. We're just busy with life. How many how many of it's been a while since you just seen God do something in your life personally? Like you knew that was God. You know, I, I, I remember all the things that God has done for me over my life. And it's always nice when you see that, that thing unfold. If you haven't seen that in a while, won't you pray for us? Say, God, show me something. I'm not talking about some great revelation. I'm just talking about just something that would remind you that God's listening and God's watching. You know, 
I've seen God do some incredible, miraculous things in my life and others. I knew a, a person one time, and this is a true story, that out of the blue, their mortgage was just paid off. I didn't even know how it got paid off. Just paid off. I've seen things happen that would just floor you over the years. But it seems like it's been a while. It's been a while. And so we're praying that God will show you something. Say, God, just show me glory. It's what Moses said, show me your glory. It's all right to say, hey, God, it's me. Can you show me some glory down here? I, I, I really need some encouragement. How many of you, if your kids called right now and said, hey, hey, pops, mom, I need some encouragement. I, I, need, I, need, I need you to send me some money. That's how we think encouragement as kids, right? And you know what you do? Well, if you'd quit wasting your money, you'd have some, right? But how many has ever just sent your kids something or done something for your kids out of your love? Just because you love them. Not because you had to, because you love them. Sometimes we need to let God show us some glory. Say, God, show us something. Be ready when he does. It's amazing. It's an encouraging thing. Declare it. Amen. Y'all stretch your hands this way. Brother Fred wants that declared over his life right now. Father, in the name of Jesus. God, you know, Father Lord, exactly what he needs. God, your son is declaring it, God. He's desiring it, Father God. And God, we declare it over his life right now. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, we know that you're able, Father Lord, and we call upon that name that's above all names, God. God, to do it right now, Father, in his life. And God, give him that testimony. Amen. Does anybody else want that this morning? If you're that way, just stretch your hand. We're going to pray over you right now. We're going to pray that God show you what you need to see. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now. Father, Lord, we declare it in the mighty name of Jesus. God, that you would do what needs to be done upon each one that's lifted their hand, God. Father, they need to see something, God. And I pray right now you begin to show them your glory, God. God, remind them of who you are, Father, Lord. God, we know that you can do it. We trust you. We believe it. We walk in it, God. And we declare it in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now do this. When he does it, testify about it. Tell somebody. Let me tell you what God did for me. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, Tuesday after Brother Fred left my house, I, I hired his kids to clean out my garage so they have some money for youth camp. Tuesday, when it got done, I couldn't walk hardly. I was literally so bad I had to get a cane. That's my wife. A cane to get up and walk because my ankle was killing me so bad. And I sat there Wednesday and Thursday not knowing how in the world I was going to go back to work on Friday. And you know what? Since then, it hasn't swollen on me. It hasn't got painful. I mean, it's been a little bit, but nothing like it was. And I thank God because I, I declared to God in bed. I was like, God, please. I need you to heal me. I need relief. And I need it now. And God's been doing I was hurting so bad I didn't go fishing. Now, that's how bad I was hurting. Y'all know me. I said, I ain't going fishing. I'm here. I, and I said, God, I need, I need to be healed because I need to go fishing. He healed me, but he didn't let me go fishing. Hallelujah. God can do it. Trust him. Kristen, can you come down here? Are you up there in the sound booth? Kristen had a birthday. Amen. We're going to give her a card. Samantha Saxton had a birthday, but... I heard Asher kept them up all night last night, and we got her card this morning. I see somebody up there way. I don't know. I, all I see is, yeah, uh -huh. I'll let you take it to her, but you better not take what's in it. She might hurt you. 
We love this family. We love this lady, and we want to wish her a happy birthday for all she does for our church. She works in the tech team, and now she's helping with the secretary's job in the office, so we appreciate you. you want no. no. Uh, when are y'all doing the thing? Everybody's wanting to know. After they eat lunch, so be watching if you want in on the next, the next, uh, what's it, what is it? PlayStation. PlayStation. Yeah, our, our, our youth pastors just moved to Texas City. We're raising money for them, so they're doing a, a raffle for one of the PlayStations for Restoration City Church over in Texas City, so we thankful. Is uh, Rose in here? Was it Rose or Chloe? Chloe, is Chloe, Chloe in here? Uh, if she's in the back, can we just get her next Sunday? Okay, we'll get her next Sunday. I uh, thought they were going to bring her in, but maybe Rachel might be by herself. So, uh, I think they're coming in right now. Hey, all right, we'll get them in here. We're going to receive our birthday offering for Chloe. We do this for our kids. We just do like a little dollar march, let them go around, pick up some, some birthday money. And, and I always love it because they always show up on their birthdays. Amen. Chloe, come on down here, sweetheart. <laughs> and I would like to welcome uh, the Lay family. Uh, they're visiting with us this morning, been all the way from Pennsylvania. Good to have them in the house of the Lord with us this morning. I'm going to tell you what, I need to learn how to vacation from these guys. I, that was like a three-month vacation, it seemed like. It's good to have you all back. Amen. Brother Jason is going to be ministering for us in a couple weeks on a Wednesday night. You got some money for me? It's your birthday. Oh, you want me to give you some money? How old are you? 13. Teenager. Woo, let's give her a hand. All right. All right. She's going to walk around. If y'all want to just give her a dollar or two, I, all I had was a 20, so I just really blessed her this morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. All right, Chloe, you're going to have to move faster. It's lunchtime. Come on, Chloe. Get it, girl. Get it. Y'all call her. Make her run. Come on, Chloe. 13 years old, my goodness. Yeah. Brother Williams, good to have y'all back this morning. I bless y'all for being here. It's good to see y'all. Chloe, there's still money there, girl. Making rain money. I think I need to bring the teenagers in when they have birthdays to collect tithes and offerings. I think we might get a little bit more there. Amen. We want to thank y'all for being here this fourth. Be safe tonight. Go out, have fun with your friends. Don't do anything stupid. Don't blow your fingers off. Don't call me tonight and say, hey, pastor, I need you to pray for me. I blew my arm off. Don't do that. All right. Some things just, you know, you can't pray over that kind of stuff. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Ha uh ha. -huh. Funny, funny. Laugh, laugh. All right, guys, you're dismissed. God bless y'all. Have a good day.